I'm going to speak now with American journalist T.D. Allman. For many years, he was the foreign correspondent for Vanity Fair. Now, his work has been shown everywhere, from the New Yorker to New York Times, the Rolling Stone, the Washington Post. That's just naming a few. T.D. is actually down here in the Keys right now talking about his latest book, which is entitled Finding Florida. This spans 500 years of the fascinating and sometimes surprising history of our country fourth most populous state. T.D., thank you for being on. Thank you. And now it's the third most populous state. Third. I think it's just it's overtaken up. New York. Yes. <laughs> it's lovely to be here in Key West. Uh, I learned a lot I didn't expect to find out about Key West, as a matter of fact. Key West, of course, takes up a considerable part of my book. And let me just put in a punch, a pitch, for our independent bookstores. Yesterday I stopped in Alamorada, and I have a wonderful bookstore there called Hooked on Books, and I'm delighted to say my book was sold out, but they've ordered new ones, so you can order online, of course. Mm -hmm. But if you have a chance to go to your independent bookstores, please support them. Well, they have to go quick, too, because I know the copies of your book are flying. T.D., what have you thought about the response from Finding Florida? Well, I, you know, having a book is like having a baby. It's your little <laughs> child, and you want the best for it. But the national response is, is important and gratifying. Uh, the book had a near full page review in the Wall Street Journal. Yesterday I had a piece in the New York Times on the myth of Ponce de Leon. And to my surprise, it's now the most emailed article in the New York Times right now. I guess yesterday wasn't a big news day, but it was supposedly the 500th anniversary of the discovery of Florida. And as I point out in that article, and as I found while researching my book, Finding Florida, uh, most of what we think we know about Florida is myth and fiction. Ponce never discovered Florida. He never founded anything. He never went near St. Augustine. He was not looking for a fountain of youth. He was looking for gold, and Florida is the only state with no metals. He was Florida's first celebrity homicide victim. Really? You're teaching me something I don't know, T.D. Well, I had to teach <laughs> Which is myself. A lot of things. <laughs> no, no, no. I had to teach myself. You see, mm -hmm. that's the nice thing about uh, writing a book. So anyway, what really the real founder of Florida was a guy named Menendez de Aviles. Uh, he founded St. Augustine about 40 years later, and people don't like to celebrate that anniversary because uh, the Spanish did not care about Florida. It kept swallowing up expeditions. People get getting killed and losing money. And then they found the French were here. They had had a settlement at Jacksonville, so it was like the Cuban Missile Crisis in reverse. <laughs> Menendez tore across the Atlantic. He massacred all the French, and that was the first, as I point in the book, that was the real Florida first, the first massacre of white men by white men on the continent of North America. And that, unfortunately, was the beginning of our bloody history, slavery, the Civil War. And I, I point out these realities, and some people get irritated, but they are the truth, and we should know the truth. Absolutely. As I said in the Times, maybe if we understood the past better, we would not build our lives on sinkholes. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like Thank it a you. lot. Now, why did you feel you had to write this book, T.D.? Uh, what my career, basically, for more decades than I would care to mention to it, <laughs> a delightful young ingenue like you, <laughs> has always been based on the desire of the press and of people to get things wrong. They love getting things wrong. They love a conventional wisdom. So I started out in Laos at the age of 23, and I went up there and I found out the U.S. was conducting, the CIA was conducting a secret war there. Now there have been thousands of journalists in Saigon, but I had learned to respect people. You know, I listen to people, whether they're brown, they're black, they're orange, they have polka dots, whether they're rich or they're poor. And the Lao people in the markets in the countryside told me what was going on, and I wrote it. And it was a little bit like this article in the New York Times. People were as surprised back then to find out the CIA was conducting a secret war in Laos as apparently they are today to find out that uh, Ponce de Leon did not discover Florida. So I'm sort of the innocent guy who goes around and says the emperor wears no clothes, and uh, a lot of people don't like it, but I have to say a lot of people are really gratified mm -hmm. that there's somebody, I'm out there fighting for you to get the real truth out, whether it's I'm working as a foreign correspondent, as a historian, uh, or just as a human being. Mm -hmm. You like making people's jaws drop. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> actually, you know, when you go out promoting a book, uh, you... Um, you learn a lot about yourself. And one of the things I learned is I really am a very private person. And I have 
been on TV a number of times now. I've been all over the state. I'm about to start a nationwide tour in California. And what I found out is I really don't like being a public person very much. Mm -hmm. First of all, I have to shave every day. I have to <laughs> shave before going on your program. And then the other thing is simply I don't like being a public person. Mm -hmm. It's too heavy. You know, you have to make everybody happy. You have to put on. And like on this book tour, it's my duty to the publishers, to the people who are buying the book. I want them to know how much I appreciate it. And mm -hmm. so I do this. But also, I really have a wonderful story to tell. Mm -hmm. And let me tell your readers. The real story of Florida is so much more fascinating than what you thought it was. You're going to love learning about it. Oh, it gets me excited to pick up my copy of Finding Florida. Now, you also discovered some Key West ties in this book. Absolutely. Something was very, you know, we, we're taught in school sort of there was Reconstruction uh, in which the federal government uh, enforced civil rights down here. And then we had the... the racist reconstruction. Long after that, the good people of Monroe County, and remember they were all white because only white people could vote then, for mostly white people, I take that back. The overwhelmingly white electorate elected a black judge here in F Key West from Monroe County named James Dean. And he did, he got caught up in a, I won't go into details now, you'll enjoy reading in the book, but he was a valiant, important and role model. He should be a role model for all our children. He was born under slavery. He was self-educated. He won popular support uh, among a mixed-race population here in Monroe County. And then the racist governor in Tallahassee uh, threw him out on specious grounds. As one paper reported, it's just because he's black. Now, I just want to finish this off. I know we're running out. I did the digging. This white governor had a black niece. Really? Yes, his, he had Latin brothers and he had black brothers and they all lived at the same plantation. And they, the, the niece was educated because her father was a rich man and her uncle was a governor. And you know, Florida def, desperately needed medical personnel, but they sent her to the Congo because they couldn't let her do good work here in Florida and she died. Her name was Lulu Fleming. Wow. The judge in Florida was named James Dean. And that racist governor, he put that you know that red diagonal cross? Mm -hmm. That's the cross of slavery. We don't notice that, but it still persists. Mm -hmm. But I've got lots of other stories I could tell. So lots many. of them. Pick up your copy of Finding Florida. And you know what? The next time you come on the show, you don't have to shave if you don't want to, okay? I know. But <laughs> you're, I, I really want to do my best for you. Know, thank you for having me on. Thank it's you a for great being on pleasure. This it's a joy to be here in Key West and in the, all of the Keys, I might add. Well, we hope that you come back very I soon. I will come back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back. There's much more to come today.